What's good, y'all, man? It's your boy, Cozy Joe. And y'all, today, we will be reacting to Where Are the Chris Hansen Predators Now, y'all? Now, I know I'm a little bit old on this, but listen. Without further ado, hope y'all like and subscribe and enjoy the show what happened to the six most notable creeps from Hanson vs Predator and we're going to begin by right. talking about the math tutor Mike Manzi who's had his life pretty much ruined as a result of the I'm Chris Hanson no you're not episode after arriving at the sting you gotta be a different nigga don't want to mess with little kids bro get help sting house Mike bumped into Chris immediately before trying to make the excuse that he was simply making sure that the 13 year old girl was safe inside her house uh -uh. after desperately attempting to leave Mike was arrested taken back to the police station yeah. and interrogated for sick. approximately 35 minutes after which the episode ends with the explanation that because Mike's discussion was pretty clean prior to the meetup he was only sentenced to three years probation meaning that he avoided any time in prison and wasn't registered on any unsavory lists Dang. however this isn't to say that, that Mike's life has been easy ever since the episode went live. In late 2021, a conversation was leaked with one of the show's editors who explained that the head of security, Ron Knight, was actually Mike Manzi's uncle and that there is a part that never aired where Manzi is insisting tonight to let him go because he's known Manzi since birth. This is apparently why Manzi made such an effort to convince the crew to let him leave peacefully, yet his uncle told Manzi the best thing he could do is go through the garage and remain silent, which Manzi obviously didn't do. As a result of the episode, Mike now hates his uncle, which has more than likely led to the decline of Manzi's other family relationships. However, the most interesting thing revealed in the message exchange was that Manzi was an avid watcher of TCAP back in the day, which explains why he recognized Chris Hansen immediately. Mike is that nigga thought he, all, he had everything in a book, bro. He thought he had everything in a book. My uncle's some bit hotshot and I already watched the show. Get the fuck out of here, man. All that bullshit. Yeah, right, nigga. You played yourself. It's since been found on a felony dating site, as well as on Facebook under a different name, where a Reddit user was able to get this picture, as well as apparently have a conversation with Mike, who stated that he gets recognized very often, and that Mike actually seems like a very chilled out dude. On Chris Hansen's podcast, Chris explained that Mike is no longer working in education. As far as we know, he is not tutoring or teaching anywhere. He lives with his parents. Which would explain two recently surfaced photos of Mike working in a retail job representing a pretty significant fall since tutoring for some of Connecticut's wealthiest families. However, Mike still got off Dang. lightly in comparison to John Dupe, who as a result of his appearance on the show has now become homeless. John waltzed into the sting house without saying a word and was so oh, creepy dang. that simply standing next to him was enough to terrify the decoy, yet she apparently had nothing to worry about as he stated that he was only there to watch the football. After revealing that John was simultaneously talking to more lie. than one minor, he, he was arrested but interrogated and given a notice to appear in court Let where he'd be cry. trolled and heckled by the attendees as he pleaded guilty. Four and the judge actually in the case crazy. had to order the crowd to be quiet, to be orderly, because they had figured out who he was and what he was being accused of, what he was pleading guilty to. John Dupe was given an eight-year prison sentence beginning in August 2016, that although point, this certainly isn't where the story ends. At least you eat. Only four months into his prison term, John's brother and sister were both killed in a car accident, which happened on the very same street where the sting house was located and in case losing both of his siblings wasn't bad enough there are unconfirmed anecdotes that john was also disowned by his parents after the episode went live Ooh. he was released from prison on the 24th of july 2018 Good so for him. just two years out of his Not eight year his sentence siblings. yet after being released john was forced to register on a public offender list which displayed his address as a connecticut homeless shelter after three years in the shelter john was able to move into a group house although in october 2021 only two months after moving Moving out of the homeless shelter, John violated his probation in an unspecified way and was sent back to prison for another year and two months. Since his release in December 2022, John has been residing in a shelter for recovering addicts. Although John Dupee isn't the only person on this list who's been back to prison, as Joshua Cologne also recently violated his probation. Joshua was the New York plumber who locked the door behind him after entering the sting house, stating that his biggest nightmare was ending up on a Chris Hansen episode. After after Josh comes out of the bathroom, Chris is already there waiting for him. There you are. 
you know who I am. He already yes. knew what and he was result, doing. And as a result, Josh is unbelievably honest, Why saying out his intentions him? immediately. After being taken back to the station, he'd incredibly admit that this wasn't the first time that he'd met up with someone under age, which eventually helped the court to secure a seven-year prison sentence. After the sting happened, but before Josh went to prison, he was still working as a plumber and would admit to a co-worker that he was very remorseful and would happily take back his crazy Russian ex, then go back to that house with Chris Hansen. On his really bad days, he would talk about how he doesn't want to die alone and that he knows that he'll never have a semblance of a normal life again. Josh was sent to prison a few months later in early 2016 alone, and would serve three years out of his seven year sentence. However, this wouldn't be the alone, last time buddy. that Josh ended up behind bars. Again? In September 2020, approximately one year after being released from his first prison stint, a post was made to the TCAP forum stating, Joshua Clone was convicted yesterday after spending a few months in prison for a probation violation. Four years jail, execution suspended after six months, probation nine years. This guy will never learn. Josh's second prison term came to an end in March 2021, after which his former co-worker and friend took to Reddit to explain the reason for the sentence. He contacted me after he got out of prison for a second time, letting me know that he'd been framed. Apparently he wasn't allowed to have any pictures of any children on his phone. His sister shared a picture of his niece in a chat that he was in and he got locked up for it, his explanation. Interestingly, if you now search Josh's Imagine you don't messed up your life so bad to the point where you can't even see kids, not even your own blood. That's crazy name on an inmate search engine, it states that Joshua Cologne is or was recently an inmate currently at the Connecticut Department of Corrections, CTDOC, located in Weathersford CT, leading many to believe that Josh is now back in prison for a third time. But what happened to the wealthy accountant third who Chris time. recognized he from the train? His, his name was Charles Lawrence, and after walking oh, into oh, the sting house, the following exchange occurred. Now, Chris... What are you doing? But this is the first time I've caught anyone who I know. After which Charles was arrested and taken back to the station for an interview. Throughout the interrogation, Charles made the hilarious claim that because of his poor eyesight, he read the decoy's age as 18 instead of 13. Every time he was 18, my eye got scratched. My glasses were upstairs. I'm looking, I thought he said 18. I swear to God, I would never, ever in my entire life. That nigga know he However, lying, the judge wasn't dumb enough to buy times. this excuse. Sentenced Lawrence to two years in prison, which he'd served between June 2006 and June 2018. Whilst in prison, the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants, under which Lawrence was employed, confirmed that Mr. Lawrence's AICPA membership was terminated. My thing is, hold on, I know I keep pausing a lot, but my thing is, you catch these nasty niggas, right? This disgusting, ignorant part of a species, and you only just gonna give them three years? Three years? Knowing that, you know, they gonna go right back out there, dibble daddle in some more little kids or do something else stupid. You might as well keep them in for life. You might as well keep them in for life, bro. Because, you know, obviously they know what they're doing is wrong, right? And they don't care. They don't care until they get that, that charge. But other than that, they, they know what they're doing is wrong. So why only give them a little smidge of time? No, nah, throw their whole life away, bro. Cause they, 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 they disgusting. Effective May 25th, 2017, because of a final judgment of conviction for a crime punishable by imprisonment for more than one year. Chris also mentioned that Charles had a second job hey, as a commercial real estate agent, and after finding Charles's LinkedIn, it states that he's the president of a company called Lawrence Real Estate Enterprises Inc., which is still active today and lists Charles as the company's CEO. However, Chris did mention on his podcast that Charles had some issues with keeping his license. I'm not clear as to whether or not he's still involved in commercial real estate. There was an issue with his license after his conviction after he pleaded guilty although even if he was able to it's unlikely that charles would get much work these days given mm. his reputation you had your in life. may 2021 Good, a post was made to reddit explaining it. that they saw charles lawrence living in an over 55s complex which has been confirmed as true after looking up the address listed on his public offender registry this page also shows the most recent photo of him taken in mid 2018 exhausting all of the information that we have on charles lawrence however we've got plenty of dirt on the now infamous Stephen Buchanan, who gained notoriety for showing up to the Sting House with duct tape, a camera, and various weapons veteran. in That's his car. Wild. This was extra terrifying as after arriving at the house, he refused to enter and rather try to coax the decoy into getting into his vehicle. Do you want to come in? Do you want to go? Can you just like come in and chat for a little bit? What do you want to do? I'll show you how I'm there for. You got some food if you want. You want to show you around? Can you watch a movie? I'm not, I'm not going to the movie. 
<laughs> After being confronted by Chris, Buchanan tries to blame his depravity on the PTSD he got during his military time in Iraq. Although despite this impediment, Buchanan still served three years in prison. See, after which fans of the years? show began to notice that the story he shared with Chris wasn't entirely accurate. A user by the name of Bud1985 took to Reddit in a post reading, Stephen Buchanan, this took me a good hour of searching through old pics from Iraq, but I finally found it. I served with his turd. Bud continued in the comments by stating, when he was active duty, he was a tank mechanic. And how do I know this? He was my tanks mechanic. He would do maintenance on it in the motor pool every Monday. He never went on a single mission. He never seen a minute of combat. He may have been through some mortifier, but that's it. It pissed me off so bad when I heard him blame it on PTSD. Dang, the most bro. recent photo of Stephen Buchanan comes from 2022, which accompanies Ew. the update from Chris Hansen's podcast. Nigga, as far as disgusting. we can tell, he still lives in Connecticut with his parents, and he's working driving a, a large truck. Also explaining that he was able to have a conversation with Stephen's father. I called the number we had for Stephen Buchanan, and a man picked up, and it, it actually sounded a little bit like Stephen Buchanan, and I, I asked for Stephen right away. Bro, why do all predators look the same? Have you ever noticed that, that all predators look the same? They all got that same haircut, ears sticking out, oval shaped head, weird looking cartoony, you know, flushed away like face. <laughs> like they all just got that disgusting and then that bald head right there. They all got that disgusting look. Trying to, trying to be innocent, man. You knew, you knew you nasty. You look nasty. Way the man said, "Is this Chris Hansen?" And I said, "Yes, it is." This is why you're calling. I said, "I'm calling for Stephen Buchanan." And and the father had the tone of a man exasperated with having to deal with the circumstances around his son. He told me that Stephen has moved on with his life, and essentially that he wants to only look forward. And then the senior Buchanan asked that I never call the number again. But while Stephen has done a pretty good job of moving on with his life, this has been significantly more difficult for Jeff Sokol, who became arguably the most notable predator in Chris Hansen history after bringing a pepperoni pizza to the remember this Stinghouse. Thing. The iconic episode became etched in YouTube history as Jeff seemed so relaxed about the confrontation that he was only able to focus on his dinner. I want to know a little bit more about that nigga want to eat his pizza, bro. After Jeff spent 16 minutes demolishing he his care. pizza, he'd offer Chris a slice on the way out. You can take your pizza if you like. You want a slice? I'm good, thank you. And even after being taken back to the station, Jeff maintained the attitude that he hadn't done anything wrong, according to a source who was at the station with him. He kept his cool, his free housing and death. He was going to be able to get out of this be able to get a good lawyer and really take care of his case. While Jeff seemed confident that he wouldn't receive any charges, this didn't alter his reality, as after going through three different lawyers, Nasty. he'd be sentenced to two and a half years in prison beginning on the 27th of May 2017. Whilst locked up, the Jeff Sokol episode became so popular that fans of the show tracked down the restaurant from which the pizza had been ordered and began to visit the restaurant asking for the exact same pizza that Jeff had gotten. The restaurant has since had hundreds of positive reviews many of which bro. subtly referencing the Jeff Sokol incident. And according to an email sent to us pizza. by a fan, the restaurant had to eventually ask people to stop asking for the Sokol special, although there doesn't actually seem to be any evidence for this claim. By the time Jeff was released from prison in June 2019, his appearance on the show had racked up a view count in the tens of millions, leading Jeff to try and change his name legally to Sonny Derek Porter. Sokol actually went to court How do they and know petitioned this? to change his name to Sonny Derek Porter. A few years ago, I was arrested as a part of a sting operation trying to meet a girl who was underage. The sting was part of a nationally syndicated TV show, Crime Watch Daily, Hanson vs. Predator. This episode is now available online, along with many other troll videos and nasty comments from fans of the show. In the aftermath, troll I have experienced videos. humiliation, harassment, wow. and embarrassment. One You're could argue that nasty. this was justified, but I have surely lived with much remorse since the arrest. Since my current name will always be linked via a simple internet search, I am requesting authorization to change my name. I'm working hard to be a better person overall and making a sincere effort to treat everyone with respect. I hope to meet new friends and acquaintances and wish not to be judged based on one gigantic mistake I made a few years ago. I hope to be judged for the person I really am, the person I am today. More than anything, I would like a second chance at a happy and safe life. However, the name change was eventually rejected, which only led to more trolling. It was then discovered Dang. that Jeff had been forced to sell his apartment and according to this Reddit comment, which isn't the best evidence, Jeff 
wife moved in with his parents in blank. It seems like he comes from a pretty affluent family, so he probably just mooches from his parents and stays low key. The most recent photo of him comes from early 2021, which unfortunately marks the final piece of information we have on Jeff Sokol, because despite being one of the show's most notable people, he certainly kept one of the lowest profiles. Wow, the weight loss of YouTubers who became morbidly obese. That's crazy. That's, you know, and like this whole thing right here, I mean, that's that's crazy too. You know, you 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 live this long life, right? Work so hard, high school, college, whatever. Get yourself a good job, good reputation. You got family, you got friends. You know, you got beautiful looking men or women out here. You know what I'm saying? But you want to go for kids. And then next thing you know, you want to blame it on everything else whenever you get caught. You know that you nasty. You know what you did is wrong. You freaky frog. That's what you are. You a freaky frog. But anyway, y'all, man, I'm about to go ahead and end it right there, bro. Honestly, I do not have any type of sympathy towards any of these people because you're just disgusting, bro. Like, come on now, little kids. Why? Little kid booty. You're weirdo, bro. You're weird. Weird. But anyway, man, hope y'all enjoyed this video, man. Make sure y'all go ahead and hit a like and subscribe, man. Let me know down there in the comments of what next should I react to. And without further ado, I hope y'all stay cozy, stay blessed, and stay safe. Cozy Joe's out. Go beat and check grease.